Scuf and Elite, the two names that continue to pop up as you continue your search for the best advanced controller. Both seem like great options, but which one is better? After a year with both, I came to the conclusion of which one is best for me. Maybe my insights might help you take a leap in the direction that fits you best. You're probably where I was about a year ago. Tired of getting destroyed by mouse and keyboard players and jumpy drop shotters. Not to say that you can't play with a controller on a PC, but hey, if you just got a PC and you've been gaming on console all your life, you probably want to resort to a controller. For me, I'm a dad, so when I get on the sticks, whether it's on a PC or console, I think the first thing that I'm going to grab is a controller because I feel most comfortable there and I only have so much time to bang the street with the boys, you know? As you're probably aware of by now, all the big name and little name streamers love Scuff. This is likely because... Many of them are sponsored by Scuff, and I've yet to hear Microsoft really sponsoring any streamers, unless you're Mighty Mouse, but he's a special case. However, there are many in the gaming community that hold the Elite controller in high regard. Now, don't get me wrong, the Elite has faced some of its own issues in addition to some of the standard issues that come along with controllers, ranging from stick drift to the controller just flat out not working. But the overall sentiment for the Elite 2 in the community was pretty positive, so I decided to make that my first purchase. And you're probably wondering, why did I end up getting both? Let me tell you. I ran with the Elite for a few months and it worked well, living up to all my expectations. And then after about three months, it unfortunately got stick drift. With the controller still under warranty, I just decided to send it back to Microsoft. But now I was controllerless. And I thought that it would take maybe about three weeks for Microsoft to get my controller fixed, right? So I decided to purchase a scuff with the intention of using it as a backup controller until my controller came back. And also I'll get a chance to test out both and see maybe if I like the scuff a little bit better. Like I stated earlier, I think I found the one that fit me best after running with both for almost a year now. Before getting to the review, if you find this helpful, please like, comment, subscribe. Also, if you wanna skip ahead, there's gonna be timestamps in the description below. Okay, let's get into it. I'm gonna be going through my experiences with both the companies and the controllers and then letting you know why I chose the way that I did. Let's start with the scuff. I didn't get too much when it comes to customization with the scuff just because I want to keep costs low. But as you probably know, there's not much that comes with the scuff. This box here is actually the repair box that I got my scuff in, but it matches pretty well to the box that it actually came with because it doesn't really come with much. It comes with a micro USB cable, a scuff key to do trigger adjustments, an EMR key that allows you to reprogram your paddles and the product manual. In terms of the specs of this controller and what you're really paying for, you're getting trigger stops, hair triggers, four removable paddles, interchangeable faceplate, interchangeable thumbsticks, interchangeable anti-friction rings, hand grips, and like any standard controller, you can use it both Bluetooth and wired. As I said earlier, I kept things pretty basic when it comes to the customizations of the controller. I went with the camel faceplate, I followed a monochromatic aesthetic with the button layout, and I only updated the paddles to red to add a little bit of contrast, which I think I really like in the end. In terms of functional customizations, I opted to have my right thumbstick heightened, but it doesn't look like that happened unless their differences are very subtle. An unfortunate note here is that in order to get the high threshold for your thumbstick is that you need to order them separately. And also I got no rumble pack, both preferred with the idea of helping my aim in FPS games. After that, the controller is pretty standard when it comes to peripheral plugins, connecting to your Xbox and overall button functionality. Going through the specs in a little bit more detail, we have the trigger stops. The trigger stops have two levels, basically normal and shallow. Shallow being about halfway and normal being all the way down. This basically allows you to depress the trigger a little bit faster and get your shot off quicker. Hair triggers. This is a feature that I really like with the scuff controllers that I find unique to them. Basically, it allows you to really customize the pressure needed to actuate the trigger pull. So if you have this set to shallow, you don't need to go all the way down before you have your trigger actuate. The four removable paddles. This is the key reason I was looking into getting the scuff. I find that the four paddles with the scuff are a little bit better in concept than they are in reality, just because I find it that I can only use two of these. And using the outside paddles are easier than using the inside, and I can't use all four at once. So if you're like me and you have bigger hands, you might want to remove the inside paddles, which is pretty unfortunate because you can't really maximize the buttons on your controller. The interchangeable faceplate. If you get tired of the color layout you have now, you can just update it to something new, keep things fresh. The interchangeable thumbsticks. 
as I stated before, you don't get much when you get your controller, but you are able to update your thumbsticks. Unfortunately, they don't come with your initial controller, so you have to buy the additional sizes. However, if you don't know what size you want, they're not that expensive, or if you already have a set of control freaks, I would recommend using those as the grip associated with the thumbsticks that you get with the scuff are nothing to write home about as I find my fingers slipping pretty easily. Anti-friction rings. I feel like this is more of a marketing ploy on scuff side, but basically the way that they explain it is that it helps against glide resistance with your thumbsticks as you kind of scroll them around. And using the original Xbox controller, it really feels not much different to me, but hey, it's an ad and the hand grips. I actually like the scuff hand grips as I feel that they're pretty tacky and I don't find my hands slipping off very easily. Let's talk about the Elite 2. And what's in the box is you get a USB-C cable, a carrying case, that's also a charging dock, a set of six thumbsticks, two standard, two classic, one tall, and one wide dome, a set of two D-pads, one standard, one faceted, a thumbstick adjustment tool that allows you to adjust the tension of your thumbsticks, and a product manual. In terms of specs, you get trigger stops, four removable paddles, interchangeable thumbsticks, interchangeable D-pads, hand grips, and again, like your standard controller, this controller is both Bluetooth and wire compatible. Trigger stops. Very similar to scuff, but in this case, you get three levels. Standard, shallow, and very shallow. However, the Elite doesn't have the hair trigger functionality the way that scuff does, but these three levels I find are more than enough and allow you to really dial in your trigger stops and shots. The four removable paddles. I like the layout of all of these as all my fingers can reach while I'm playing, which is optimal for what I was looking for with the advanced controller. Also, unlike the scuff, you can configure not only the triggers, but every button of the controller through the Xbox Accessories app, which I think is pretty awesome because at that point, you can really lay out this controller exactly how you want to for any game, no matter the presets. Also, to change out the paddles, they're a lot more seamless to change versus the scuff. If you find that these paddles are too small, you can swap these out for the first generation of the Elite controller and use those paddles instead, as I've been told that those are a bit bigger and might support your hands a bit better. But I feel my hands are fairly big and the newer ones seem to work pretty well for me. Interchangeable thumbsticks and D-pad. Just like the rest of the controller, everything is magnetic, so you can easily swap out whatever you need, just quickly lifting and replacing. This is versus the scuff where you have to take off the faceplate to adjust any of the front buttons or thumbsticks. In addition to this, the Elite also offers the ability to adjust the tension of your remote. So you can actually adjust how loose or how tight your joystick is, which I think is a pretty awesome bonus. Hand grips. Unlike the scuff, these wrap almost entirely around the handles themselves. I actually like the hand grips of the scuff a little bit better, but these hand grips, they aren't far behind and do a well enough job of keeping my hands gripped on the controller. And as with the other controller, this controller is both wired and wireless compatible. So the only difference is now that you have a USB-C cable, it's gonna charge you a bit faster. In terms of battery life, both the Scuff and Elite are pretty solid. I can go about a week straight on multiple hours a day without having to worry about charging. As for my experience with each company, I have to say each didn't go quite as expected. To start, both companies are pretty large and my expectation of individualized customer first experiences were pretty slim to none when it comes to customer service. And as my purchases led me to engaging with both customer teams, I have to say each helped shape my opinion of each company and who I want to continue doing business with. As Microsoft was the first company I engaged with, let's start there. I ordered my controller in early June, 2020 but I was looking to buy one for a few months prior, but everywhere it was sold out or they were being price gouged. After a few weeks of checking back on the Microsoft site with no luck, I decided to reach out to the customer service team for an ETA, as well as asking some questions about fixes to the issues that they were having with the elites. They actually responded to me with not just the date, but they offered to send me a personalized email when they came back in. They also confirmed that they were in the middle of refreshing the controller, so that's why it took so long for them to come back in stock. They confirmed that many of the issues that I was asking about were going to be addressed and fixed in this refresh. So this gave me even more reason to wait. I assumed the email part was BS, so I continued to check the site into that date approach. Sure enough, inventory was replenished around that date, 
and they did send an email that didn't appear to be automated. With the increased demand around these controllers and the constraints on manufacturing during this time due to COVID, I didn't get my controller until August, which is perfectly fine. After using the controller for about 10 plus hours a week for about 60 plus days, I ended up getting stick drift. And I basically blew out the left joystick and it wouldn't allow me to sprint. I also think now is the time to mention I bought the extended three year warranty. And that's on top of their updated standard warranty that now gives you a year with their controllers versus 90 days. So I sent them my controller thinking I would be without a controller for some time. I found myself with a fixed controller in about 10 days. Since then, I've had stick drift again, and I have to say the experience was the same. So it looks like this is the way that they normally operate. My purchase with Scuff, however, went a little bit differently. The first time I had to send my Elite back, I figured that they would have it for at least a month. So I decided now might be the time that I get a Scuff, thinking that I can use this as my backup in the meantime. However, Scuff was back ordered as well. So I had to wait about a month to receive my controller. By then, I received my fixed Elite controller about two and a half weeks before that. When the scuff arrived, it seemed to be pretty much built to my expectations and customized just the way that I wanted it. I was excited, plugged it in, and then it played. And then I came back and checked maybe a day later, and I saw that it wasn't holding the charge. So I reached out to scuff's customer support team, and pretty much what they told me is that I have to either request a refund or send it back for a repair. Thinking that we had a communication issue, I reiterated that this was a brand new controller and I asked if they can just send me a brand new one while I send this one back. That way I don't have to wait for it to be repaired and wait another 30 days to have a controller in my hands. At that point, they just reiterated what they said initially and they basically told me that there wasn't anything else that they can do to help me out. Knowing that I wanted to test out the controller and maybe do a review, I opted to have the repair done. So I waited about a month and a half to get my controller back. By now, I think it's pretty clear who the winner is for me, but I think I can break this down to four levels in where I saw Microsoft really outshine Scuff. One, warranties. For Scuff, you get the default six month warranty and you don't have the option to buy an extended warranty. So if you end up getting stick drift with this controller, then I think pretty much you're out of luck after six months and you have to buy a new one. Microsoft's default warranty is one year. This used to be 90 days, but after the release of the Elite 2, there were overwhelming issues with the controller where basically they did a recall. And so they added this warranty to it, which I think is a great value add in itself. In addition, they have a three year warranty that they allow you to purchase separately. And I think this is a huge value add as a warranty of this length is pretty much unprecedented in the accessory space. This also leads me to believe that Microsoft is looking at this from a customer standpoint, where they understand coming out of pocket upward of 200 bucks for a controller is a lot of money. As we're paying a premium, this controller should last a little bit more than a few months. So it's nice to see that Microsoft is standing behind their product. Next is customer service. I think you could probably tell by now that I really enjoy Microsoft's customer service. With them, I felt like I was being seen. With Scuff, I kind of felt like I was just another order and they could do with or without me. Third is functionality slash value. Per the Elite, I have the ability to easily swap out and adjust controls without the need of any tools or taking apart the controller. The other thing is that I can use all four paddles on my controller. I don't have to just opt for using two. I can also adjust and customize any of the buttons on the controller and not just the paddles. I can adjust the stick tension without the need of any third-party add-ons. And also there's the small value add of a charging case, additional thumbsticks, and additional D-pads included with the purchase of your controller. And fourth is the desire to continue improving. With Microsoft, you can see that they're making adjustments to improve their controller. They actually pretty much did a recall, refreshed the controller, sent it out again. Also them adding that additional value of the 90 days to a year in the warranty. And then a three year warranty that you can buy additionally, I think is amazing. And I'm not seeing really any of this from Scuff, especially when it comes to addressing a lot of the issues that I've been hearing in the community. With such a huge base, you would think that this would be a priority. These four factors really made the difference for me and it really made the 200 price tag for the Elite 2 worth it, where with the scuff, I feel like I was left wanting more. Knowing what I know now, would I have still made the decision to buy the scuff as an additional backup controller? To do the review, yes, but to have a legit backup controller, I would purchase the Elite 2 again and purchase that additional warranty. Because at this point, once my scuff gets stick drift, I'm kind of out of 200 bucks. And that's it for my Scuff versus Elite 2 review. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment, subscribe. And like I said before, this is just my opinion derived from my experiences with both companies. 
I would love to hear what you all have to say. If you guys had similar experiences, opposite experiences, if so, please share in the comments. I'm sure it's going to help somebody make that final buying decision. Thanks for watching.